I am obsessed with that soundbite and Trey Lance's mentality when it comes to 49er football for this upcoming season. Look, it's not about the Twitter tough guys or social media or even talking heads or opinionists like me or people who cover the team. It's Trey Lance's show, Let Trey Lance Dance. And Trey Lance needs game action. I think Trey Lance, and this is coming from me, so you know I mean this as the ultimate compliment, Trey Lance has Josh Allen potential. Now, he barely played at North Dakota State, didn't play last year as a rookie. If he gets in a rhythm with these guys behind Trent Williams and that offensive line with that unbelievable defense, the upside of Kyle Shanahan coaching the team, Super Bowl. That's the upside. But the big key, you have to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, Jimmy Garoppolo, remember, told me in April on my SiriusXM radio show, he likes Trey Lance. Likes him a lot as a person, but it was most certainly awkward when you consider their relationship and how they traded all those picks to number three overall in the draft last year. And, you know, Jimmy G, Kyle was going to kill him off. Remember that? You know, we don't know if anyone's going to be alive after the draft. So it was awkward. And then Garoppolo's the one who still played when it mattered and took the team to Championship Sunday where they ultimately would lose to Los Angeles. So you have to trade Jimmy Garoppolo. He's going to be healthy and remember he told me this around July 4th so I still expect him to be traded I still expect the Garoppolo to be traded to the Carolina Panthers I think he must be traded so this way the other players aren't looking sideways when Lance makes an inevitable mistake and also you have to just let Trey Lance breathe that soundbite was awesome that's maturation and I think Trey Lance is going to eventually be excellent They just have to let Trey Lance dance. Some significant news out of Arizona, where Kyler Murray is back at the Arizona Cardinals facility for OTAs. And this is a huge deal. And of course, it was going to happen. And remember what Steve Keim told me on my Sirius XM radio show, when he said he's going to give Kyler Murray a new contract at some point between July and Labor Day. I mean, it's going to happen. The GM said that to me on the record. Look, I have concerns about Kyler and how he plays down the stretch of seasons, and last year was a hot mess. And, you know, you got to remember, they don't have DeAndre Hopkins for the first six games after the suspension. I still think that Kyler Murray deserves credit as a ball player who can improve, and Kime stressed to me that At the end of the day, we have to remember that he was playing baseball when he was at Oklahoma, so he wasn't 100% focused on football. There needs to be another level. There better be another level and another gear to Kyler Murray and his ascension. Look, I'd be skeptical on paying him, but Steve Keim drafted him with the number one overall pick, drafted him the year after he drafted Josh Rosen, admitted a mistake, so there's a lot invested in Murray. Also, you don't want to be on the wheel of quarterbacks always searching for one. If you have Kyler Murray, you certainly have a quarterback, but Murray better show maturation as a quarterback and a leader, and he better carry this team when Hopkins is not around. Speaking of the media this week, how about Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott, who told the press that Dallas hasn't taken a step back this offseason. See, I disagree with Dak, but I love these comments. He's the team leader. Dak Prescott needs to realize, in the court of public opinion, the departures and defections are kind of a big deal. You look at Cooper, they're worse at receiver. You look at Collins, they are worse on the offensive line. You take a look at Gregory, they are not what they were on defense. So the schedule is tough in the first couple of weeks. I mean, those could instantly be two losses to start the campaign. The next two games are relatively easy against the Giants and against Washington, but Listen, I think Dallas has real playoff ability and real playoff potential, but I think for the sake of fairness, we are looking at a situation where the Philadelphia Eagles are unequivocally the team to beat when you consider the division and A.J. Brown and what they did in the draft with Davis and all the moves and Howie Roseman made. So I think that it's all about Prescott taking that next step, being that kind of quarterback 
who can make an inferior roster better. I love Dak. Now we need to see it. Bears quarterback Justin Fields is happy with the weapons he has around him, saying he isn't worried that Chicago doesn't have a big-name wide receiver. I, I beg to differ. I, I'm very concerned about the talent around Justin Fields. And I love Fields. I love the draft pick. I love his savvy. I love his accuracy. I love his athleticism at Ohio State. But, I mean, is this a depth chart or a witness protection program? You know, I happen to think Mooney can become a legit number one, but this, this is dreadful. And remember, I blasted the Bears for not drafting a, a wide receiver in round two. The numbers as a rookie are gross, and that's because Matt Nagy had no idea what he was doing. So just a complete and utter waste of a rookie season. Bears are going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL, and I don't say that with any joy or jubilation. But I'm very concerned about the growth and development of Justin Fields because you saw that depth chart. There is literally no one around him. I tend to agree with KD on his response because I cannot believe for a second that Seth Curry got more double teams than Kevin Durant when they played and won championships together, okay? I agree with Durant's tweet. I will also forever defend Kevin Durant going to Golden State, wanting to win a championship, and for being the best and most important player on that team. Steph was the best before Durant. KD was not a hood ornament on those teams. Kevin Durant, the alpha dog. And two times he was the finals MVP. You cannot knock Kevin Durant as a warrior. But you can say that it hurts Kevin Durant and that Steph Curry has won the divorce in shocking fashion. The Warriors missed the playoffs the last two years. This past year, they were the three seed. Durant was the favorite to win the East and to some to win the NBA over the last couple of seasons. Toe on the line, Game 7 against Milwaukee. Sheer insanity, he was majestic, Durant was, in that Game 7 against the Bucks. That was bad luck. This year, a mess, winning zero playoff games. And you can blame KD for foolishly hitching his wagon to Kyrie Irving. That was his choice to win. So this all impacts, fair or unfair, Kevin Durant's legacy. So does Steph Curry taking this version of the Warriors to the NBA Finals. Because if the Warriors win, and Steph gets that missing piece to his career, the Finals MVP, it takes Steph to a different level. And really, fair or unfair, it dings and hurts Kevin Durant. Steph is the Vegas favorite for MVP for these NBA Finals. And, you know, let's just call it like it is. He needs it. Just won the MVP for the Conference Finals. Now, it's not going to be easy against Marcus Smart and the awesome Boston defense. And truth be told, Golden State... Golden State can win a title with Clay or Wiggins or Poole being the top scorers in given games. But Steph has a chance to define his career by winning this title and the finals MVP sans Kevin Durant. And simultaneously take a big old dagger into that in terms of legacy for KD. And I'm here for all the back and forth for all of it while rooting hard for Steph Curry, the greatest three-point shooter ever. The beauty of baseball is you see something special every single night. And as I mentioned last night, the Shine family went to the Yankees-Angels game, and seeing this was absolutely majestic. Aaron Judge leaps to rob Shohei Otani of a laser home run in the first inning. Wow, look at that smile. What a catch. Take a look at this. That is awesome. Hot night at the stadium. Hot stuff on the field. The stars on display. Great for baseball, especially if you're like me and my family, Yankees fans. Because that catch set the tone and the tempo for the Yankees' hot start with Noah Syndergaard looking like a batting practice pitcher. Anthony Rizzo doubled. Matt Carpenter, you see it right here, hit a homer. 4 nothing Yankees before the Shine Girls actually got their nachos. True story. Jordan Montgomery pitched brilliantly and pitched to the scoreboard. 
Jose Trevino homered. And those last two nuggets of domination show off the Yankees' brilliant depth. The five starter shuts down Anaheim. The brilliant defensive catcher homers. The Yankees have the best record in baseball. True World Series contenders, and they demoralized Anaheim. And for the Angels, this on the screen, no excuse. The hot start cannot be a thing of the past. The Angels have dropped six straight. It's a mess. It cannot be a trend. The Angels are too loaded and, frankly, too important for baseball in order to get Trout and Otani into the playoffs. But the Yankees' formula of pitching defense and timely hitting, legit. Nasty Nestor on the mound tonight for the Yankees. Feels like business as usual for both teams in the Bronx. And that's not good for the Angels. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.